So I'm working on this end of the spectrum with patients that are 50, 60, 70 years old that have already created lifestyle habits. They already have their certain lifestyle patterns and I'm asking them to look at what they're doing, what they've been doing for their entire lives and make a change. You guys are on this side of the spectrum and you're working with children, with people that are just creating those habits. So they're learning how to structure their lives. They're learning how to make those healthy choices. So hopefully they don't end up in the hospital with that group in that category of lifestyle diseases. That's why your job is so important and why I'm so excited and passionate about talking to educators because you really have that moment and that chance to impact children and help them create these healthy lifestyles so it doesn't become something that they have to learn how to correct because they're already on that path. They're already going towards wellness without even thinking about it. So I want to get into this information because this information in this packet here is going to give you the tools that you need to pass down that basic nutrition information to children. And Carol did mention the healthy plate. So this is an update. I love this. I think it's fantastic. And it really translates well to the patients that I work with and especially children. This is very visual. It's very easy to say, this is a healthy plate. Try and make your plate look like this plate. So we're gonna talk about all the categories that you see on this healthy plate. The first one being your grains. Ideally, you wanna try and make the slogan is, like Carol said, half your grains whole. This is important because you're getting a lot of nutrients by having whole grains. When grains are refined, white bread, white rice, a lot of the nutrients are stripped out of those grains. You're losing fiber, you're losing vitamin E, you're losing a lot of minerals, you're losing vitamin B, you're losing everything essentially except sugar. So it's important again to educate them on the idea of looking for whole grains and not necessarily looking at foods that are brown or grains that are brown, but really challenging them to understand what they're eating and questioning them to look at ingredients. Vegetables, this is very challenging. A lot of children do not want to eat vegetables, but these are your powerhouse foods. These are so healthy, they're so important, and they can easily be incorporated into a diet. You want to aim for about three cups a day, and they're important for your immune system, and they have a lot of anti-cancer properties. Has anybody heard of phytonutrients? Awesome. So those are going to be your anti-cancer properties, which you can get in some supplements, but really, the best thing you can do is eat them in their natural form. Find that simple food. Eat fruits and vegetables. They're colorful, they're fun. Fruits. Fruits are a little bit easier to get into a child's diet. They're portable. They come in their own pre-packaging. So they're easy to give to a kid that's on the go. They're also colorful. Kids like to eat colors and they're sweet. So that's something that you can try and incorporate into their diet to replace maybe some of that sugary food is encourage them to eat more fruits. Another thing I like to challenge people and children to do is I tell them to try and eat one color of the rainbow every single day. Dairy, Dairy is a great, easy, and accessible product. This is why it's really, it's really a good point to talk about and it's really important for kids to understand the benefit that they can get from dairy. Vitamin D, calcium, all of that is good for their bones, it's good for their muscles. And it's a good alternative to soda. How many kids that you know drink soda on a daily basis? It's a lot. A lot of kids are just sucking down the soda. And there's really nothing nutritional about it. It's sugar, there's some phosphorus, it's, it's nothing. So it's not giving their bodies anything. So if you can try and transition them to either drink water or milk, then that's always going to be more beneficial. Milk is great because it's in convenience stores. So when they're going to buy a soda, a lot of times they can be redirected to get a milk instead. So like Carol said, try and get them to drink that skim milk, 1% milk, and have them understand that there's vitamins and minerals in milk, where soda, there isn't anything. And there's actually a worksheet in your packet that we'll talk about that goes over this. Another important fact I just want to point out is a lot of kids are lactose intolerant. So it's important for them to understand that there are other alternatives. 
Soy milk, almond milk, those are becoming more and more prevalent. I see soy milk everywhere, and I've recently been starting to see a lot of almond milk. Have you guys noticed that? Yeah. In supermarkets, there's like huge explosion of almond milk. It's great. So they have other alternatives. And also, calcium is not just a mineral found in milk. It's actually in certain vegetables. It's in collard greens, it's in cauliflower, it's in Brussels sprouts. So by getting them to diversify their diet, by getting them to eat more vegetables and fruits, you're getting them more exposure to vitamins and minerals that they might not even know about. Protein. Carol did mention getting a variety of protein, and protein doesn't just have to be meat. It doesn't have to be an animal product. It can be the beans and nuts and seeds. It's also important for children to understand the types of protein they're getting. So when they go to a fast food, that protein is very processed. Those meats are, they have seasoning added to them, and again, they're just very processed. So for them to understand that by going to the supermarket, they could get something that is less processed, that doesn't have any fillers put in it or any preservatives, is very important for them to understand that just because it's chicken doesn't mean it's the same if you get it, depending on where you get it. When they're getting, or their parents, are getting lean cuts of meat, 90 to 95% is a goal that you want to make, and that refers to how much protein is in it. So it's 90% protein and 10% fat. So the higher the number, the higher the protein content, and the lower the fat. Because fat is very healthy, you just have to, again, consider your source. Fat is protective for your heart, and especially for children, I think 60% of your brain is comprised of fat. So for a child, they need to eat fat. That's, they're developing, they're growing, their brain is coming into its full form. So that fat is a huge and important component of their diet. But getting them to understand what healthy fat is, is the important aspect. Looking at olive oil, canola oil is heart healthy. Nuts are fantastic. Avocados, those are everywhere out here. I love those. Nuts and seeds, those are the important fats, and they are an important part of a diet and a necessary part of a diet. And it, trying to get them to realize that those fried foods are gonna have a lot of trans fat, processed foods, junk foods. If they look at the label, if it says hydrogenated, that means trans fat. And with that whole movement in the past couple of years, food companies are required to say if it has trans fat. So that's really nice to be able to see this product is trans fat free. But again, try and get them to go to simple, simple items and these healthier fat choices. Empty calories. So we talked about soda. That is poster child of empty calories. There's nothing in there that is healthy. So there are some tips here just how to find healthy snacks. 10 grams of sugar per serving or less, one gram of saturated fat or less, except nuts. Those are gonna be higher in saturated fat, but that's okay. That's a healthy saturated fat, and yes, there are different kinds of saturated fat, but we won't go into that. Just know, nuts are okay. Also, again, with the idea of soda, Gatorade, Monster, Red Bull, I don't know if you notice that children are drinking those, but I'm gonna put those in the same category of soda, nothing. No child needs Gatorade. They can get what they need from Gatorade from water and oranges, and they'll be fine. So we can encourage them to just at least make those connections. Gatorade, mostly sugar. Yes, there are some electrolytes, but again, you can get that from food. Breakfast is, in my opinion, still one of the most important meals of the day. We talked about healthy fats and how brains are developing at this age. So eating breakfast can actually help children be more focused. It can help with their memory. It can help with their brain development. It's an important part of their daily, their da their daily day. <laughs> snacks and eating out. Again, we talked about snacks. Try and get them to <coughs> explore different snack options with vegetables and fruits. And then we have a worksheet that I really like that gives them a good idea of how to eat out, how to read a menu, what to avoid, what to look for when they're looking at menus in restaurants. Physical activity is fantastic. That's the last component of the complete healthy diet because if you're doing everything healthy, if you have a healthy diet but you're not getting any physical activity, you need to have those two. They go hand in hand. Extremely, extremely important. It can help with stress. It can help decrease their energy because kids have a lot of energy. And it's important for healthy heart function. So again, it just ties in with this whole concept of healthy, eat, healthy eating.
So if you guys can go in your packet, I'm just going to go over these worksheets quickly. So the first one is the whole grains. And this just has different activities to prompt them into thinking about everything that you talked about or everything that was discussed in the packet and just reinforce those ideas. It gives them an ability to go onto a deeper level of understanding and really probe them to see what they know and what they learned from what they were taught and reinforce ideas. And then at the bottom, it gives them an opportunity to think about their day and how they can incorporate more whole grains. So again, asking them to do a little bit more thinking and get that higher level of education when it comes to the whole grains. Fruits and vegetables, this one's really cute. It has the pictures of the veggies, and then it matches them to nutrients, and then again it asks them to match it to what it does within the body. So this is actually a pretty challenging worksheet, but it can give a lot of valuable information. This was the Marvelous Milk worksheet that I was talking about, how it compares a food label or a nutrition label for soda versus a nutrition label for milk. So this gives kids the opportunity to actually look at the ingredients, to actually look at those vitamin and mineral breakdown and see how milk and soda compare. And then it will question them to say which has more protein, which has more sugar. So they can really see what the difference is between milk and soda. Meats, beans, nuts, and seeds. This is going to look at the protein portion that we talked about and get them to understand what healthier protein options are and start to get them to think about the way foods are also prepared. So again, this goes into different types of protein and what are everyday eats, so the healthier ones, and once in a while treats. Because again, the idea of once in a while is important too. You don't want a child to feel like they can't eat this food ever because then potentially they'll binge on it and we don't want that. So getting them to understand that on a daily basis you want to always try and make the right choice but you can't always do it. So that's okay, once in a while treats. This is one of my favorite worksheets. This is the restaurant detective. And this has an excerpt of a menu so it goes through and it gives the children different words about how foods are prepared. So this can give them the tools they need when they're in a restaurant to make healthier choices. And also they can show their parents, they can show their brothers and sisters, they can say, oh, that's not as healthy as this. So that's another way for them to feel empowered with education. And then the last part of the packet is just how you can go ahead and teach these lessons and then like Carol said, the answers are in the back. So that's the nutrition overview.